instructor. Now, I'm too shy to do that, okay? I'm too shy. She can just go up to the church, and next thing you know, she's got a good friend. She's got plate stained. And when we come in, and got to think for this, they had no car. We put tires on it here. Uh, Tom and, and, and Diane put top, to put tires on this car. Yes, and get her rod knocking. And rod knocking. And she took, my rod and my she took off the calabar. <laughs> anyway, she's going to take just about 10 or 15 yes. minutes and tell us a little bit about this trip. Yes, I was wondering if I could get the pulpit over here, please. Now, Pastor Carolyn, while they're doing this, I want to bless you with a gift. Okay. The, my son blessed me with the Statue of Liberty tour. So I want to give you the Statue of Liberty. Bless you. the flower. You are getting all kinds of gifts. Listen, I just want to say I am so honored that the Lord chose me for this mission. And it only was birthed through prayer. On WATV Radio, my ministries, we are the Bride Ministries. I do WATV Radio and WATV TV. So on the radio from January 1st to February 10th, we do 40 days fasting and praying with six other prophets across the nation. We pray for the president-elect as he was being transitioned into the White House. Uh, during that time, the Lord took my mother after three weeks of the fasting and praying. He took my mother. I had to take off a week, but then I got back in the battle. But after that is when the call came from D.C. and from California asking me to do a Christian march. I said, Lord, what have I had time to do, you know? But when people prayed for me, I felt the fire of God from the top of my head to my feet. And the, after that, the Lord woke me up four days at 3 o'clock in the morning and downloaded the assignment. So since I only have 15 minutes, I'm going to have to read this fast. So I know it's going to be hard to believe, but this is what he said. Okay, he said, I want you to drive the entire border praying for revival and to secure the borders. And he took me in a Bible study and he said, I'm the one asking President Trump to secure the borders. Amen. He said, I want law and order in the United States. Amen. Yeah. Because I have a plan for the United States. So he wanted uh, America sealed for what is about to hit the earth. Okay? So he told me, he said, think of Adam and Eve in the garden. And when they sinned, I kicked them out. Yeah. And I'm the one that secured the border. I put an angel there yeah. and said, you're not allowed back in. That's right. So that's what the Lord told me, to let me know why it's so important to pray as I'm traveling. And he told me to go. I had an old car and a ball tires and a rod knocking. So I was like, okay, Lord, here we go. So he told me to start in Washington, D.C., and to travel the entire border. Okay, then he said, interview Americans, random Americans. I mean, people at truck stops, grocery stores, parks, and I did. And here's the two questions I asked them. What is God doing in our country today? And what would you say to President Trump? <laughs> can you imagine some of their <laughs> That was funny. And they would say, can I say it on camera? I said, listen, this is not fake news. You can say what you want. Come on now. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm putting that together for the march. I will be showing it behind the White House. Then he said, write a book to President Trump. He said, I want you to tell him what you've discovered through interviewing, at that time, 250 ministers across the United States. These are people that have been hidden, not the ones that have been seen. But there was a theme in what God was saying, so he wanted me to tell the president, and to make 200 pages of signatures for Americans to sign it on this tour. It's in the back if you want to sign it. And he told me I will give it to him. So I'm just trusting. Okay, <laughs> then he said, um, I want you to pray. That, he said there'll be six cities, three on the east side of the Mississippi and three on the west, that I want you to take your shoes off Plant your natural feet on the dirt and proclaim what I tell you to proclaim. He gives me dreams, I'm a seer. So the first city on the east side was Miami. That one he had me go to the port of Miami, and I stood out there. I said, there will be no more sex trafficking coming in this port. <laughs> And anything that comes against the integrity of the United States citizens. Oh, yeah. That's what he told me. And so then I prayed. 
trade, you know, for, uh, oh, also that we would export more missionaries than ever in history. Okay, that was Miami. Then he said on the east was Niagara Falls. I'll get to that in a minute. The next one was Paul Tucky, Rhode Island. I, I know this sounds funny, but this is what he said. Okay, on the west was New Orleans. I went to the New Orleans port and prayed basically the same thing as Miami. It was a little bit different. The next one was El Paso, Texas. Now, this one was different because he told me to go to the border. And what's so beautiful, y'all, is I'm single. I was by myself on this whole tour. But the Lord told me, when you go to big cities, I will give you a guide. And he did. Every big city. So, when, except for El Paso. So, this is what he did to protect me because I know I have angels with me. He woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning and said, go. So I went and nobody was there. I felt so protected. I mean, it's beautiful with the Lord when you're out on a mission, you know. So I went there and I said, I come against the spirit of death. For some reason, there's all kinds of spirits that cross yeah. over from Mexico. Yeah. Anyway. That's right. That's right. Okay, so I prayed that. And the next one was Jamestown, North Dakota. Now, in Jamestown, he had me go to a courthouse. And I prayed to the courthouse, I come against corruption in our country. I don't know why that place represented it, but let me tell you what. Washington, D.C. contacted an intercessor in Jamestown. They want me to come. They said they've already been praying against it. So God's doing something. Amen. Hallelujah. Then he said, I want you to hold four strategic revivals on the north, south, east, and west of the nation. The first one was Houston, baby. Come on. blue so far and uh, that was the kickoff. The next one was in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Oh my gosh. God bless me in Los Angeles because I want to go to the Dream Center. I want to serve the homeless. I want to go to Skid Row. I want to go to Angeles Temple because I love Amy Simple McPherson. And then I wanted to see the Zeus Street. I want to see Bonnie Breakhouse and God bless me with every bit of it. And that revival was with the Zeus Street people. Bam! Come on now! That was the revival of the past and the revival of the future. The north one was Detroit, Michigan. Woo! Woo! Come on, Detroit. I know you're watching. I saw you on live streaming. Come on now. All right, Detroit, that one was uh, racial healing of the land. I mean, racial healing and the healing of the land. The next one is Nashville, Tennessee, which represents sending out the Great Commission. Tennessee is the volunteer state. Okay, the Lord also said, do 50 days of blaze prayer on WATV radio. I had uh, four other ministers on there with me. We prayed 50 days through the summer. We prayed for every state. And let me tell you, we would pray the facts, spiritual facts of what's going on in that state, and we would intercede for that state. And it is sad what's going on in our country. So that was 50 days we fought there. Then he said, do a final march, September 9th of 2017, and I was hoping it'd be all over the United States, but I'll tell that in a minute. Blow show far as declare. We are a Christian nation. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're taking our country back. The Christians are coming out. We're enacting the Great Commission. We will not be silent. Amen. We voted the president in. So we're going to support him. Now let me tell you what is happening. I'm going to tell you spiritually. The Lord told me, okay, what's happened is society has latched on to the government as a beast. Now hear my heart, like an umbilical cord, feed me, clothe me, take care of me, because the church wasn't doing it. Come on. Come on. We quit going out. We quit loving our neighbors. We quit serving our people. We became inclusive. Give me a word. Come in here to my church. I want you to serve me. I don't want you to know your destiny. Yeah, true. I want you to serve me. Uh, so society's out there. We quit loving them, so now they attached on to the beast. Yeah. So with Trump in there, who fought the beast and is still fighting the beast, hey, come, hey, on. come on. He's still fighting them. Yeah. The church all of a sudden became impotent mm -hmm. as soon as he got in office and quit supporting him. Right. And he's been left out there. So of course, we've been praying, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Okay, so what Trump is going to do, he's going to cut that umbilical cord. Yeah. Right. So that's why these people that are attached to the beast, they're all getting nervous. Here goes my supply. It's going to be gone. What am I going to do? They're nervous because they're spoiled brats. You know what I mean? Like spoiled kids. No! All right, but here's the 
here's the thing. This is where the church has to get it right right now. We got to pull the harvest in, honey. We got to tell them, come back home. The church repents. Come back. We'll help you to learn your identity. Yeah. Their identity has been in the beast, all right? So this is what brought me here. I'm on the tour. I'm battling at the house. The devil trying to tell me to quit. I was like, I'm going to go to I run out of gas. To I have $20 is gone. Well, that $20 brought me all the way to Houston. So I, listen, I, I looked at the skyline and I said, I love you, Houston. And then the Lord spoke back to me and he said, you're about to get an upgrade. I said, please give me a car. I need a car, Lord. So about a week later, sure enough, I got my rod fixed. I got new tires. They bought me new clothes. Got my nails done. Got my hair done. <laughs> Houston always makes me look good. <laughs>
confiscated my little pepper spray. That was funny. <laughs> I'm standing in front of the Niagara Falls like, you know, I'm just in awe. Oh, I mean, God's beauty. Oh, how many times I had to pull over and go, wow, right. You've got to see this. Look at these buffalo. <laughs> Look at the grass. It's just so beautiful. But anyways, so I finished that. I come back over to the United States. The Lord said, okay, your next town is in New Hampshire. Your next town is in Maine. I'm driving through Maine, and I'm taking beautiful pictures of white churches. I come across one that has the lesbian flag, oh, wow. homosexual flag. Now this is after I've been praying and plowing and fighting in the spirit, fighting these devils across our nation, right? I about, <laughs> I about had it up to here with the devil by the end. Because <laughs> by the way, after I was in Niagara Falls, I had 20 bucks. Somebody sent me 20 bucks. I said, Lord, I'm driving this car till I run out of gas. And I ran out of gas. I'm in New York. I'm in New York. I said, that's it. I'm, I'm having the sound of God. I'm done with this $20 gas. So I put my phone up on the car and I started, Brian, because I've been doing these live broadcasts across the nation. I said, I'm done. The Lord is So that helped me to get through the New England states. But anyway, so I'm driving by this white house, I mean this white church, and I see this homosexual flag out there. <laughs> Woo, this fire come over me. I got out of that car. I walked over there. I put on my live. I said, this is it. I said, that idol is coming down in Jesus' name in our nation. You preaching, acting like you're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You ain't doing nothing but preaching a heresy. And you're coming down that abomination in Jesus' name. But what's funny is there's a line of <laughs> a line of cars sitting there and they're all listening to me. They're all bogus. So this one woman starts cussing me out and she's hollering, coexist, coexist. I looked at that woman, I said, it's coming down in Jesus' name. <laughs> I want you to go to New York City. I was like, ah, I'm going to need some money, Lord. I had $200. Well, I was at this church in Rhode Island that had a missionary, and I said, the Lord told me, he said, give that missionary your $200. I was like, I finally got some money, and now you want it all. <laughs> so anyways, I, I gave him the $200. The Lord gave me $400. Yeah. Because of the mission I had in New York. I'm going to stop here because I'm going to tell about New York, but it would go. Unless y'all want to hear it. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you going to stay over for Tuesday? I can. Yes, please. Okay, I can tell the whole story then. Yes. Y'all got to hear about this date I had in New York City. It was so awesome. God was great. It was really good. But when I stayed in Washington, D.C., they put me right next to the Supreme Court in the Capitol here prayer room. And the Lord blessed me. They anointed me.
Well, I know my wife was posting things on Facebook during the process, and it was indeed a process. And uh, 